Hi, in this video I'm going to explain how I sequenced the core changes on the Noodler from the sequencer on the Electron Digitome and also then used the Noodler to do uh, chord sequencing, pads and motifs playing on the Digitome. So basically you've got the Noodler sending MIDI commands to the Digitone and you've got the Digitone sending MIDI commands to the Noodler and the Digitone producing the audio. So there's a, a lot going on here and it was actually quite a lot of fun to figure out how to do this because it really showed me how uh, flexible the Noodler is in terms of its MIDI controllability and also it was good fun to just like great, great sounds out of the Digitone. So let's take a look first at how the Noodler is configured. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up the uh, MIDI configuration on the Noodler. And this uh, USB cable is just providing power, there's no, there's no MIDI coming through it. So I'm going to be receiving MIDI clock and notes and control codes from the Digitone onto input B, where the Noodler is configured to receive its MIDI clock. And I will be sending uh, note information from the Noodler to play channels on the Digitone over output A. Now, obviously, the Noodler can control four different parts, a pad, a drone, and two motifs, which correspond to, in this case, four different uh, tracks on the Digitone, each of which is mapped to a different MIDI channel. So the first thing we need to do is get the MIDI configuration right on the Noodler itself. Now, what I do here is I'll go into Menu, Settings 1. I have the pad and drone on channels 3 and 4, corresponding to track 3 and 4 on the Digitone, and the motifs on channels 1 and 2, corresponding to track 1 and 2 on the Digitone. They're all coming out on MIDI port A. Now the, mid, the Noodler itself can be controlled on channel 15. I've configured it here to receive notes and control codes on channel 15. So when the MIDI sequencer on the Digitone sends notes or control codes on MIDI channel 15, they'll be able to control what the Noodler does. One of the things we can use that for is sequencing key chord changes by sending the white keyboard notes over the MIDI channel 15, which will change which of the chord progressions are playing. And that's how the sequencer on the Digitone is going to tell the Noodler, hey, change from like C to G to D or whatever. It'll send a MIDI note on channel 15, and that setting there says map that onto the, the key changes. Some other changes here, menu two, uh, I just adjust the velocities, I find it's better just to dial these back a bit. The Noodler defaults to a pretty high note velocity, which I think comes in a bit hard on the Digitone, especially with some of the FM patches. On channel on setting page 3, a few things I do. First of all, make sure your clock is configured to take the external clock from MIDI B. The Digitone is configured as the clock master. It, this will default to internal, which is obviously not what you want here. Um, and I have turned off pad quantization. I just found that the default setting here, which was I think a quarter notes, the pad changes were happening just a little out of sequence with the rest of the motif and drone changes, which led to a fairly jarring transition. So I just turned that off, which means uh, when the core change notes come through, the pad will change at the same time as the rest of the notes. So that's how we've configured the Noodler to be controlled by the Digitone and in turn send MIDI control codes to the Digitone. Now let's look at how we've configured the Digitone to receive all of this and also what we did on the Digitone sequencer to control the Noodler. Now let's look at how the Digitone has been configured. First thing first, uh, let's just look at some audio samples I have here. So track one and track two uh, are the motifs. Track two is a, a bass motif. Uh, track one is going to be the lead motif. I start with the levels on these turned down so I can kind of fade them in during the track as it, as it comes up. Uh, track three is the uh, pad, which is uh, this, uh, this patch I have. Some nice reverb and echo on that. And track four is a drone. Lovely. So that's the audio side of the tracks on the Digitone. Now let's look at how we've configured the MIDI. So we'll go into settings here to MIDI config, go to sync. So the Digitone is set to send its clock 
and also chain, uh, send program changes, which is going to be what we use to control the uh, pad and other things on the Noodler. If we just go back just to look at the channels, it's the standard configuration of track 1 to MIDI channel 1, track 2 to channel 2 and so forth. Great. So that's how the uh, Digitone has been set up to receive and, and send MIDI. Now let's look at how we actually configured the uh, different MIDI tracks in the sequencer. We hit the MIDI button and now we're on track 1. So as you can see, MIDI track 1 here is set to channel 15, which as you remember is what the Noodlers configured to receive its uh, control codes on. So on track uh, 1, what I did was I used um, control code 28. Now this corresponds to the control code for the pad position. And so in this uh, screen here, I just set it to a default of 65, which basically puts the pad in the middle of the range for the noodler. And then for the MIDI LFO, I set it to uh, modulate the uh, control code value, uh, a very slow speed, a very slow movement, and a, a fairly small range of movement, because I didn't want the pad jumping too far to either extreme on the noodler. And also it's a free running uh, LFO. So right now the the, the pad is just moving slowly back and forth, ping-ponging across the screen on the Noodler. So track one is all about controlling the pad. Now let's go into track two. This is MIDI track two, and I use this again, channel 15, and this is control code um, 36. And what I did with this is I wanted to adjust the length of the motif pattern. I wanted it to include more notes and fewer notes to kind of create this real dynamic movement in the lead motif. And this is for motif one, the lead motif, the audio for which comes out of the audio track one here. So you see that's control code 36. Again, I set it to a fairly initial small value of six, so a six note range. And then the, uh, the LFO, again, very low speed, very small range. Um, modulating the control code value and triggered uh, one off every time a node is triggered. So it's adjusting the the pad value. So that's track MIDI track one and two. What did I do on MIDI track three? This is where uh, I actually was able to, using the sequencer, sequence the core changes that I wanted. So we're starting on um, pattern one here, and pattern one just has a fairly straightforward, we start off with uh, just a C, and that brings us onto chord progression one, or C major, and you know, the MIDI velocity isn't important here, we're not playing notes, we're just sending the note value, and then we jump on, and that's that basically resets the noodler back into C major when pattern one starts up playing. We go into MIDI track four here, and pattern, uh, this uh, track is going to also reset to C as well. Now, if we went into pattern two, like this, track one, we would see it's D. So now we've switched chords by just sending a note here on track one to the noodler. It's going to switch chords whenever that trig is played. And so here, uh, you know, uh, 16, 32 steps in to the sequence, we send an F, and now we're changing chords again. And then we go back around and we would loop back around on the pattern and send a D. And track two is empty. So really the only chord changes here are happening on track one in pattern two. And we do the same thing in pattern three. And you'll see I have a slightly different uh, chord. It goes E and then G. So depending on which pattern I have selected, pattern 1, 2 or 3, different chord changes are being sequenced. All the while the LFO is changing the size of the motif, the position of the lead motif, and the pad is slowly moving up and down the range to create some really nice dynamic movement. If you add in some LFOs on the audio tracks themselves, and you actually are able to modulate some of the um, settings on the patches, you get some very dynamic sounds being sequenced very dynamically by the noodler. It's actually a whole lot of fun. You can get some pretty crazy sounds out of it. So let's take a listen to the whole thing coming together. Okay, so now with all that said, enough talking from me. Let's go in and we'll start playing. First of all, let's arm all of the parts on the noodler by pressing arm all. 
and hit play. Well that gives you the general idea. You can play around, you can live play with all the settings on the digitone and at the same time adjust twitch patterns and of course you can create even more progressions of this and uh, modulate more things on the Noodler itself. It really is just a ton of fun to have these two playing together. Hopefully uh, this gave you some ideas if you have a Noodler, uh, I have a link, um, if you don't have a Noodler I should say and you want to buy one, um, I have a link down to Conductive Labs website below. Obviously you know where to get a, a Digitone, find it on any of your favourite music websites and hopefully this will give you some ideas of how to put the two together. So have fun and please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.